Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and as per request by a viewer, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to implement the PayPal uh, payment system into a React application. So basically for most people who have businesses and want to implement a payment system into their application, they usually have a hard time using, using PayPal because for many people it is not very intuitive. So that's why I think this could be a good video for you guys. And yeah, so the first thing you're going to need is a React application. I already have mine over here and mine is empty. So in our project, it's basically going to be a button uh, where you can check out. And when you click on the button, there's going to be like a, an option, another button with option to pay by PayPal. And you can click on that and do all the authentication and the payment through PayPal itself. And it will return and you can see in your account that the money has uh, disappeared from your account and it went to someone. So in order to do this, the first thing you need to do is go to um, go to the the, send, the developer .paypal .com, uh, website and you need to create an account. So basically, you can just ignore this. I'm going to delete all these accounts and also the uh, my apps and credentials, uh, which I'm going to create in this video. But I really wanted to show it to you guys so that you guys can basically have a clear idea and uh, I'm going to delete all of them. So don't use the same as me. So the first thing you need to do is go to the accounts and you need to create an account. Okay. So I'm going to click on create account and we're going to choose business account. You can choose like the country. I'm going to choose Canada because it's basically where I live. So I'm going to choose Canada and make sure that you're choosing business because you're only able to sell stuff through the API if you are if you have a business account and you're only able to buy it if you have a personal account. So we're going to create two accounts. We're going to use two accounts, one personal and one business. The reason why is because we're going to use the personal one to buy the stuff. And for your information, you already arrived. Like when you create an account into in the developer.paypal thing, it already comes with two default account, accounts, one person and one business. You use the default one, the default personal one to log in and make the payment in your website and use the business one to register your website. So, so if you want to log in into your fake account just to test, and this is what we're going to be doing in this video, you need to go to the sandbox.paypal.com and you can log in with the following account. So when you come here, there's probably only going to be this two right here, the default ones, and you click on the personal one and you go to view and edit account and you'll see that a bunch of information appears here. Don't try to use the same information as I did because as I'm doing right here, because I'll definitely 100% change it right after this video is over and uh, you can come here and click login and use the following information. So uh, I had already logged into this account. So that's why it already ap appeared there. So I can copy the system generated password, click here and you can click on login because it's going to log in into your account. And I have I have this one. This one is the one I already created. And let's just leave it there. The name is SBS3BZ, something like that. So let's go to my apps and credentials. And um, over here, I'm going to delete my old application. Um, so I can show you guys. Okay, this yours is going to appear like this just with the default application and you can click on create app and give it an, an app name. So I'm going to give it a name of test, right? And choose the the account, the business account I created. And you can know it's it's a business account because it's uh, the email basically says at business, right? So I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to cre click create. And you're going to be prompted with a bunch of information, but more importantly, the client ID. I need you guys to copy this client ID, ID and keep track of it. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our React application. So in our React application, we are going to basically just have a uh, as you can see, a simple React application here. And we're going to have an app.js and the components folder. The components folder is where we're going to render the page where we make the PayPal, uh, where we make the payment, right? So this is why we have a components folder. So if you come to the index.html, there is a link in the, in the documentations of the website. So if you want to check that out, you can go. But basically, there is a, a tag, uh, which is a script from PayPal and you can just copy and paste it into your pub into your index.html i already have mine right here and basically yours will be just this right so i'm going to erase my client id and yours is just going to be this something like this sb 
I think this is what it, it looked before. So you can just copy and paste this on your index.html or you can go to the documentation and copy from the website itself. But what you need to do now is copy the client ID that we received right here, you know, this and paste it directly into this. So I'm going to paste it here. And at the end, you need to set the currency. So I'm going to put an end symbol and write currency equal to my currency. In my case, it's Canadian dollar. So CAD and you can save this. Okay. So we can close the index.html and you can come to your app.js file, right? So what we need to do here is we need to create a, a button, which is going to represent the checkout. So um, button checkout, and I'm going to create a state. So the state is basically going to represent if we're going to a checkout or not. So const checkout um, set checkout. And it's going to be a a boolean so false and let's write on click and pass a function which is going to be whenever we click the button we want to set the checkout equal to true basically we're saying that whenever we click the button we want to go to the checkout page and now let's put a basically a, a conditional rendering we're going to write if checkout then we want to, if we are in the checkout page, then we want to render the following. And uh, let me erase this. Let me create the else. So if you don't know what I'm doing, I'm using uh, a, a way to, to conditionally render uh, things on, on React J, on React JS or in JavaScript in general. Basically, it's the different syntax, but you can do it in various different ways. So I'm going to finish this like this. And I got to add something inside of here. We're going to create a component called PayPal. So I'm already going to write this here. And this is basically our application, right? If we are in the checkout page, we want to render the PayPal component. If we're not, we will just want to render a button called checkout, which if we click on it, we set the value for checkout equal to true. And then we render the check the PayPal page. And for now, we need to create the PayPal component. So we can go to the components and create something called PayPal.js. And I'm going to use the RFC uh, command so that it already creates everything to me and uh, for me. And we need to render basically the button itself. And yeah, I think, I think, yeah, just the button, right? So we, we need to create a, a div, which is going to be representing the, the, the PayPal button. So let's make, give it a ref and call it PayPal. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing, if you don't understand what I'm doing, I would recommend going to a video that I created explaining refs. Basically, what I'm doing right here is in this page, there's going to be only one thing, which is the PayPal uh, button, like the default PayPal button when you try to buy something with PayPal in a website. And in, how do how do we get the button from the public, the, like the index.html? Because you can see we created the button right here and we want to grab that button in React. So the way we do this is by creating a div, which this is going to represent that button. And we're going to set a reference to it. So and we're calling it PayPal. And on the top here, we can just access the, re the reference by creating it by using the use ref hook. So you can see it already imported the use ref at the top. And that's good. OK, so we have our, our PayPal button and we need to do something about something with it. So let's create a use effect because whenever we render the page, we want to render all the functionalities of that button. So let's imagine something that I want to buy. I'm thinking maybe we want to buy like a table. So in this example, we're going to be buying a table. We want to sell a table. So um, let's create a, a, a simple implementation that would reflect that. So let's call the window dot um, um, PayPal dot buttons. And this is the the most this is the common implementation. So you don't really need to understand why we're using these names. This will always be the same. So just keep keep in mind that this is how you're going to use it in, in every uh, PayPal implementation. So at the end, we want to render um, the ref that we defined above. So PayPal and dot current. 
So when we call for the we, we call for a window for, for our, our, our DOM and we get a, a button from the PayPal reference and we want to render the this information into this uh, div right here. This is basically what it's trying what it's saying, right? So inside of here, we're gonna set all our our information about our button, and in order to do that, we need to create an order. So there's this. You can see that this is an object, right? So there's two curly braces, and we want to create an order inside of you. So create order, and it's going to be a function with data, actions, and error. And we want to use the arrow syntax because we're creating a function. And inside of this function, we want to return. So we want to return uh, actions dot order. So we're basically creating an order, and you can see that inside of here, we're going to give a description for the order. We want to give the currency, the, the value, like how, how expensive uh, or how much we need to pay to purchase this. So let's write purchase. Um, actually, let's let's write intent. This is something we need to do. And we want to give it a value of capture. And purchase units. And we want to give it a value of basically it's going to be an array and we're only going to have one unit into our PayPal button. So let's just pass the single the single order or the single item in our store that we want to sell, which is going to be a table. So let's give it a description of a cool looking table. You can put whatever here. So cool looking table and the amount is um, value. Let's make it equal to six hundred and sixty six hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, we also need to give a how do I say this? The currency code. And in our case, we're, we're using Canada. So let me pass CAD. You can put whatever you want, but it needs to be the same as the currency code you created in your account, in your fake account. And whenever you, you have any doubts, uh, what you want to do, you need to create a, a fake developer account in uh, the sandbox.paypal.com. So what I recommend is go into your uh, accounts over here uh, and getting that account that you created and go into the sandbox.paypal.com and try to log in with that account. You'll see that this is your this is what appears, right? So let me come here and we created our order and that's pretty good. So we need to add some callback functions because we, we want to do something if the function approves and we, if the order approves and we want to do something if there's an error, right? So let's come here and write um, on approve. And it's going to be an, an asynchronous function. So data and actions. And again, uh, an arrow function. And inside of here, let's write, oh, I forgot to add like a, a comment. That's why it was saying it had an error. And inside of the unapproved, the only thing I need to do is I'm thinking of like console logging the, the order. So order equal to await. And I want to grab the, the order. So order the capture. And maybe let's console log. Why did it create a parentheses I don't know but we want to console log successful order successful order and maybe add the order to this so um, order I think this should work right um, no let me just console log the order itself because it might be an object so okay now we want to check what happens if there's an error. So on error, we're going to pass another function with the, the following syntax. So we're grabbing the error and we're basically going to console log the error. Really simple. So we have the PayPal button, we created an order, we returned um, an order for a table, it's valued 650 Canadian dollars. I need to put a zero here. And when it approves, it's going to follow this function. If there's an error, it's going to follow this function. So it looks to be working. Um, the only thing we need to do left is 
try. So let's go to this and obviously there's something wrong. The reason is because I didn't import the PayPal into this. So um, let me import PayPal from, let me see, PayPal from, um, let me see, no, just one dot and components and PayPal. Okay. You can see there's a checkout button. Whenever I click it, now the PayPal uh, basic implementation appears. We can pay with this. We can use the debit card, the credit card, or the PayPal itself. So let's click on PayPal. And uh, since we created everything with our business account, as you can see, we, we have the different accounts, right? This is what I was talking about. I want to grab the information of the personal account because we're going to log in with that personal account. Let me click to continue and Okay, in this case, I'm already logged into this account. Let me, uh, let me. I don't know if I, if I can just yeah log out, and I want to show it to you guys. So I can come here to my sample sandbox account, and I can go to the personal one and click on View and Edit Account. And as you can see, we can grab the following information: the email ID, and let me copy and paste this. It's already here, so and the password. So let me copy this and paste it here. So this is just for like practice. This is just for showing you guys. So uh, you guys would see what's happening. Uh, this is a test. As you can see, it's the sandbox. So no purchase is going to be made. Don't worry about that. This is just for you to test. So if you click on login, um, it's going to log into my personal account and I can basically complete the purchase. So I can even put an information about where I want to ship the, the product. And let me see, it's loading. And I can choose the PayPal balance. I'm going to pay now. So I made the $650 purchase of a table. And you can see that if I go to my PayPal summary, this is my account. Uh, if I refresh, now the $650 uh, purchase was made, but it's not appearing here for some reason. But you can see that the, 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 there was a decrease in, in my balance. And here you can see that I made a payment and it worked. So th that's basically it. This is how you implement PayPal into React. This is the way I found of doing this, but I feel like it's a good implementation. I'm not I've never implemented uh, PayPal actually with a real application. I've never been able to have that opportunity. I've used Stripe before, so I would recommend using Stripe. Stripe is very easy to implement. So yeah, but this is a this is a great way of doing this and I hope I could have served a good explanation to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a like. If you enjoyed this video, please comment down below if you had any doubts or if you want me to make a, a video about it. This video was made purely because someone commented on my video asking me to make a video about this and five hours later or whatever, like in the same day, I decided to create this video. So I will definitely be making videos if you guys ask me for it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please stick around, subscribe to my channel, and I see you guys next time.